This is a story of struggle, of overcoming obstacles, and of success. It's a story about a party that has been working hard to deliver its founding mission. Let's go back in time to nearly 200 years ago. From the 19th century, China was oppressed by foreign invaders, imperial powers, and warlords. New regimes came and went as different groups tried to rule the country, and patriots tried to save the people. There were many struggles, but a series of movements paved the way for the development of communism nationwide. And in 1921, the Communist Party of China was born. Its founders were intellectuals, and many came from wealthy families. They claimed their goals were to make China independent, strong, proud again, and an equal to other nations. From 1924 to 1927, the CPC formed an alliance to end China's warlordism and imperialism with the KMT, who ruled China then, but represented very different interests. However, the relationship fell apart in 1927 when the KMT launched a bloody purge against the CPC. A civil war started between the two sides that went on for many years. The KMT was more powerful initially, defeating the CPC's Red Army on several occasions. In 1931, Japan's invasion of Manchuria shocked China and the world. It marked the start of a bloody 14-year battle against Japanese aggression. But the KMT insisted on exterminating the CPC before resisting Japan. In 1934, encircled by the KMT forces, the CPC and its Red Army were forced to retreat to Yan'an in northwest China, where the KMT and the Japanese Army had less influence. This was the Long March. It was a difficult journey, full of hardship. Men, women, and children crossed mountains, rivers, and swamps while fighting encircling enemies, experiencing hunger, cold, and death. The Red Army was on the verge of annihilation. Then, majority of the cotters and soldiers asked for a change of leadership. In 1935, a new military leadership was established under Mao Zedong, and people began to rally behind the CPC. In 1936, the Long March finally ended. Japan attacked the Marco Polo Bridge near Beijing in 1937 forcing China to launch a nationwide war against Japanese aggression. CPC tactics like guerrilla warfare and tunnel warfare and international support for China's war of resistance helped the nation fight off the Japanese aggressors. In 1945, Japan surrendered. While the people were longing for a peaceful life, the KMT resumed its civil war with the CPC. But the CPC now had a crucial weapon. It had won the hearts and minds of the people. Over the years, the CPC-led forces were more disciplined and better behaved than other armies, bringing people food and treating them with respect and dignity. In 1949, the CPC finally claimed victory over the KMT, uniting China once and for all. The People's Republic of China was born. But years of fighting had nevertheless devastated China. Everything had to be rebuilt from scratch. 
In 1949, China's per capita GDP was less than 27 US dollars, making it one of the poorest countries in the world. It would take decades to rebuild the country and develop its economy. There were many hurdles along the way, but under the CPC leadership, the country and its people were spurred by the desire for progress. One of the biggest moves was the reform and opening up policy adopted by the party in 1978. It unleashed China's potentials and within a few decades, the country became the world's second largest economy. The nation has made leaps and bounds on productivity, science and technology, space exploration and overall modernization. China has become a totally different country from what it used to be in 1921 when the CPC was established. Still, not everyone was well off. In 2014, over 89.62 million people in China lived in poverty. So, under the slogan, leave no one behind, a massive campaign was launched to eradicate extreme poverty. By the end of 2020, China was able to claim victory over extreme poverty. In 2020, China's per capita GDP surpassed 10,000 US dollars. When the CPC was founded 100 years ago, the divided nation and its people were bullied by foreign powers and their future looked rather bleak. Today, China has embarked on a new journey of realizing national rejuvenation and peaceful development. The CPC history is filled with legendary figures and events, but its main focus has always been the people. This has guided it for the past 100 years. How will the CPC write its story for the next 100 years?